Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys a very cool piece of software called Enlight that allows you to actually make your own custom editions of Windows XP. Now there's also a newer version of this software that uh, works with Windows Vista and uh, Windows 7, I think all the way up to Windows 10. Um, it's called NT Lights, but we're going to be focusing on the older Nlight version for today's video, specifically because I do a lot of unofficial Windows version videos on this channel. You guys have probably seen, if you've been watching me for any sort of time, that uh, I have an a entire playlist with all of these videos. I uh, just uploaded one recently called the Windows 7 Super Light Edition, but a lot of these are custom XP editions, and what these usually are, are if you don't already know, they're just kind of unofficially created editions of Windows XP, you know, Vista or Windows 7. We've even taken a look at some uh, Windows 8 ones as well. They kind of bring in like some third party programs. They will kind of tweak things around, uh, make the setup more automated. And I've had some people tell me about this program here is it's kind of one of these programs that makes this all possible. And it's again, it's called Enlight. I'm going to have this link down below and it is totally free to use. And I'm going to be showing you just how easy it is in this video to kind of make your own little edition of Windows XP. I think this is going to be a very cool video for any of you guys who watch this series of mine but kind of want to know how to do it yourselves well this video will show you exactly how to do it so like i said i'm going to have this link down below so go to the website hit the download page and you want to download the latest version which as of this video is version 1.4.9.3 and like i said this is the link right here for the windows 7 8.1 and windows 10 version we might save that for another video we're going to be focusing on the xp version today and once you download it and install it and as it says here if you don't already have .NET Framework 2.0 installed, you're going to have to install that. But uh, once you have it installed here, this is what the actual wizard looks like. So when you start off right off the bat, it tells you what operating systems, what editions of Windows that it supports. You have Windows 2000, XP, or Server 2003. So you could also do this with uh, Windows 2000 or Windows Server 2003 if you want to. But in this video, we're just going to focus on using Windows XP uh, Professional Edition. So the first step you want to do is just choose your language and hit next. So before you can use this program to actually modify anything, Thing, you first have to tell it what files you want it to modify. So yes, you're going to need to have a Windows XP ISO image. What you want to do is open that ISO image with a program like WinRAR or 7-Zip and you want to extract all of the files uh, to a folder on your computer. So I just made this folder called MJDXP and we're going to go ahead and just drag everything from the ISO image into a folder because what this program is basically going to do is it needs those files extracted from an ISO file. It's going to take these unexpected extracted files and uh, modify them and then it's going to repackage it into an ISO file at the very end of this whole process. So you just want to go ahead and like I said extract everything put it into a safe place on your computer. Okay so once you selected where the actual folder is located you know that contains all of those files it's going to uh, basically figure out what uh, version of Windows that you're going to be using and what edition. So it'll auto populate here for the uh, product name it's uh, this is Windows XP Professional and this is the RTM version build 2600 so there's no service pack so it's service pack 0 and it's version 5.1 1.2600.0 like I mentioned. It's got the uh, file path right here. So once you kind of uh, you know glance over this just to make sure that's all correct, you just want to press the next button. And I already have a couple of previous sessions in here because I was actually using this before that I uh, started recording. We're just going to ignore that and start like a brand new session. So we're just going to press next here. And right here is where the, the customization actually begins. So you have some options right here of things you might want to integrate, things you might want to remove, um, how you want the setup to behave, and if you want to create a bootable ISO image of this. So what I did is I just pressed the all button right here because we want to check out all of these options to kind of see, you know, what this program can actually do. So we're just going to, uh, you know, select all of them. You can obviously, you know, choose uh, the only ones that you want to actually mess with. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and press next here. And the first thing that you can do, which I find very, very useful, is you can actually integrate a service pack right into um, this installation. So once again, this is the uh, release to manufacturing, the service pack zero, if you will, version of Windows XP Pro. So what I can do is I can hit this select button right here and I can then actually choose a service pack. So right here, I have actually selected Windows XP Service Pack 2, and the installer will actually come up here, and you can see it's actually going to be copying 
files from that executable file over to uh, the installation folders basically for this custom edition of Windows that we're making. And right here it says integrated, integrated install has completed successfully, we're just going to press OK. And now it has been integrated, basically just upgraded itself from the RTM version to Service Pack 2. Now you can't integrate Service Pack 3 um, into like the standard RTM version because you need to have Service Pack 2 installed first. So if you had a Service Pack 2 ISO, you could then take a Service Pack 3 EXE file and use that to kind of uh, pre-install Service Pack 3, if you will, but because we're using the RTM version, the highest we can go is Service Pack 2. So I've got that installed here, and now basically we're going to be using Service Pack 2. So let's go ahead and just press next here. And right here, you can actually choose to add uh, specific hotfixes and update packs. So if you had a um, update pack for a specific update that you downloaded from Microsoft's website that you want to integrate into this, you can do that right here by hitting the insert button right here. I don't have any of those downloaded currently, so we're just going to kind of skip this for now. And uh, the same thing with the drivers right here. So if you had certain drivers that you just wanted to kind of get installed so you didn't have to do it after the OS install, that you can you know choose those here. Again, I don't have any of those, so we're just going to go ahead and skip this. And right here is where you can actually start removing specific components. But before it actually lets you do that, it comes up with this little window here, and it uh, lets you select um, things that you want to have like 100% basically, so things that you don't want to remove. So if I wanted to keep Media Center, um, if I wanted to keep Tablet PC and Remote Desktop, I can check those here, and then when I hit OK, it will now not let me remove those things from uh, this list here so that I don't accidentally remove something that I wanted. So that's definitely very useful because it's very easy to accidentally you know, check something here that you might not want to remove, so that's a very, very nice option. But I mean, look at all of these options here. I can go ahead and expand this here, and I mean, I can literally, like, if I don't want uh, WordPad, I can check this here. If I don't want the screensaver, so if I don't want Pinball, I mean, I can literally make this like an ultra-minimalized version of Windows XP here. I can get rid of the internet games, I can get rid of the games, the uh, defragmenter. Let's just try and get rid of all this stuff here, drivers. Uh, we can go in, I mean, we're probably going to want to leave most of these, um, but let's say that you didn't want a Toshiba DVD decoder card driver, you can check that. So I can, let's say I don't want to use an iOmega zip drive, I can check that uh, for removal. Uh, under keyboards here, we can check all of these uh, extra keyboard layouts that we don't need. Um, the standard US English keyboard layout is not in here, like it's not an option to remove, but literally, uh, if you scroll down, uh, you see we have uh, U.S. International, U.S. Dvorak, uh, Dvorak right-handed, Dvorak left-handed, but we don't have just a standard U.S. layout. So I think that that is just already kind of integrated into the software, and it's not going to allow us to remove that, but we can remove all these other ones that we're not going to use uh, if you wanted to. Same thing with languages. Languages, I can check this and remove all of these other languages, but again, you see there's not an English US. Uh, with multimedia, let's say that I uh, want to you know, get rid of the mouse cursors, all those extra mouse cursors, uh, the music samples, uh, the Windows sounds. We'll go ahead and just actually leave those in here. But uh, the you know DirectX diagnostic tool, images and back, I mean, there's so much stuff that you can just remove from here. If you wanted to, you could literally check every single one of these and literally make this a bare bones, like stripped down version of uh, Windows XP. Uh, under network here, I mean, we can remove Internet Explorer. I mean, who needs that? We can literally go ahead and remove Internet Explorer, uh, MSN Explorer, uh, Windows Messenger. Um, under operating system options, this is actually kind of cool. You can, if you want to get rid of disk cleanup, if you want to get rid of extra fonts, if you want to get rid of uh, help and support. Um, uh, like I said, there's a ton of things. The Tor, I mean, I don't really use the Windows XP Tor. You can go ahead and remove that. And zip folders, I mean, this right here is, I believe it was XP uh, Performance Edition or one of the uh, previous XP versions did not have or the XP unofficial Windows versions, did not have the ability to create zip folders, and they very well could have used this program to remove zip folders. Uh, so this is probably how they did it. Uh, services, you can you know remove unwanted services. Same with directories. I mean, there's so much stuff in here. I've gone ahead and I have uh, you know selected a ton of stuff here. We'll just go ahead and press next here. And so right here we already have a little bit of a issue. So it's, uh, synchronization manager needs Internet Explorer. So this is something that I uh, had not selected for removal. Well, it needs Internet Explorer. 
So what I can do is I can, or it's going to ask me, do you want to uncheck and keep the native component? We'll say yes. So now it's going to go ahead and move on to the next screen. And this is where you can customize things even more and kind of set up this uh, setup process to be completely automated. You can literally enter all of the information you want. So things like the computer name, your username, the product key, and literally just choose like for this unintended mode right here, we can do uh, fully automated. That way there will literally be no user input. Uh, you can turn off the firewall. You can skip the out of box experience if you want to. Uh, we can go uh, to run once and this is literally if you had like a, a, a script setup added to the CD you can actually choose in here to run that script on first login so just for you know testing purposes here we can uh, type in Winver and CMD and uh, MS Paint I mean and have these three programs auto execute on the first login so we'll go ahead and just you know uh, choose that here but again you could literally have your own custom script to install third-party programs, enter it into this. I mean, this is definitely a way to do that. Um, under users here, you can change the name of the uh, administrator account. You can uh, have the uh, guest account change the name of that, add you know as many users as you want to. You can enable password expiration. Uh, owner and network ID, this is where you can give the PC a name. So we'll just call this uh, XPMJD uh, workgroup. You, know, you can choose what workgroup or what domain that you want it to be a part of, your full name. Uh, in your organization, uh, we'll just put MJD, why not? And uh, yeah, under regional, this is where you can literally choose what language you want. Uh, you can actually set up a custom, like if you wanted your uh, localization to be different from your keyboard layout. You can also choose the time zone. So I'm in the Eastern time zone. I can go ahead and you know select that right here. Components, you can choose if you want to install the internet information services or the security configuration wizard display. You can set a custom screen resolution. I always uh, have my screen resolution set for videos at 1280 by 720. So I can set that here and now it will automatically uh, set the, the uh, display resolution at 1280 by 720 um, automatic updates uh, desktop theme this is also very cool if you had like a third-party theme that you wanted to install maybe even like Metro XP I did a whole video on that that'll be up in the cards if you want to go ahead and uh, check it out but uh, yeah if you want to install something like Metro XP or the Microsoft Zoom theme I mean there's you could literally uh, add multiple desktop themes here and you can choose what theme you want to be the default theme so let's say instead of Windows XP style which is the Luna theme I wanted the Windows Classic style and I wanted the font size well I guess you can't change the font size if you want the classic start menu you can see how customizable that, that this is and we're not even done yet I mean this is just on this one screen here let's go ahead and press next and move on to the next screen now right here uh, you can do things like changing the, the uh, profile path the Windows path um, you can enable OEM branding if you want to. So we'll go ahead and uh, enable that, you know, just for purposes of this video. You can enable or disable the press any key boot message. You can also under setup here, and this is something that was also done in, I believe it was XP Performance Edition, you can choose to use the classic setup. So the sort of non-graphical uh, Windows 2000 style setup. You can enable that here and even disable the background and just make it black, just a standard background if you want to. We'll go ahead and actually leave that uh, on no here. Um, but you can see, I mean, all these options in here. Uh, and under patches, I mean, you can choose to, if you want to have Windows file protection enabled. I mean, there's a lot of customizability in here. And again, we're not done yet. We can go hit the next button here. And this is where you can actually add specific tweaks if you want to. So let's say for the start menu, if I want to, uh, under control panel, let's say that I want the control panel to, to uh, display as a menu rather than a shortcut. Uh, let's say that I want to disable uh, drag and drop if I want my computer to not show if I want my documents to not show my music I don't want to show that my network places. I don't want to show that pictures I mean you can disable all this stuff in here network connections disable that uh, You can choose to remove the username you can uh, remove Windows update shortcut uh, show ie favorites use small icons You can choose to disable balloon tips uh, hide inactive icons lock the taskbar uh, visual effects, I mean, cursor shadow you can enable, active window tracking, I mean, look at all this stuff, there's so much stuff, like, I could spend, like, a hour video going through every single one of these, obviously, I'm not going to do that, but you can see just how much stuff is in here, it's crazy, and there's even this, uh, show advanced options, like, we weren't even taking a look at everything, there's so much more, I mean, it's, it's crazy, 
uh, we can go to next here and now we're actually going to begin starting this whole process where it's actually going to modify all those files for us so when we press yes here it's going to take everything that we've already configured and it's going to first integrate all of the hotfixes the packs and the themes then it's going to remove specific components it's going to process the uh, you know setup files and then integrate drivers and then finish up it's actually very very quick here obviously this does depend on how many things that you have uh, you know, removed how many things that you've added, so it will you know take up um, extra time, uh, depending on what you actually told it to do. But uh, you can see here that we're already on the third option, and I don't really think it'll take that much longer. We're already uh, processing the setup files here. So here we go. It has uh, finished right here, and it also gives us the total size of the installation. So that's 406 megabytes. It also lets you know how much you've reduced the installation by. So we have reduced this basically like this installation disk of Windows XP by 170.44 megabytes. Pretty cool, right? So let's go ahead and just press next here, and right here is where you can actually uh, create the ISO image. So you can also burn this to a DVD directly from this program if you want to. You just have to choose uh, burn image. We're just going to create an image. I'm going to call this uh, MJDXP, why not? And uh, yeah, that's basically all that you have to do here. You just have to press make ISO, and right here you just want to give it a name. So let me just uh, call this MJDXP, I'll go ahead and press save. And now it uh, will start to, you know, repackage everything. So like I said, what it does is it, you know, you have to extract everything from the ISO file, modify everything, and then it will repackage it for you. It does, like when it starts doing this, it says that the program is uh, not responding. You just have to give it a little bit of time, as you saw here. Now it's actually preparing everything, and uh, it will start to repackage everything. And this doesn't really take long either. Uh, it's actually writing it right now. Obviously, this would take longer if you were burning it to an actual, like, CD. Um, because it actually has to write it uh, physically to a you know physical piece of media rather than just creating a file like with the ISO image. But uh, there it is. It says ISO created successfully. It's got the path right there. And when we press next, that is basically it. I mean, that is how easy that it is, guys, to create your own customized version of Windows XP. So that is pretty much going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's video. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And also be sure to leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see a follow-up video to this where we actually take a look at the custom version of Windows XP that we just created. If you guys want to see that, be sure to leave a comment down below along with any other just you know general comments, questions, or uh, future video suggestions. I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.